Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Shield.com. It's the In Wheel Time car talk show. Ahead, John Vincent, U.S. News, and the 2024 Best Cars for Families Awards. All right. Later, this week's Cars on TV along with stories making automotive news headlines. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. So glad you could join us on this beautiful Saturday outside in Houston, Texas. If you're listening on a podcast, thank you very much. And join our live show on Saturday mornings between 8 and 11 a.m. And uh, If you will... subscribe, you get all kinds of other information that we'll send you as well. Yeah. And we don't sell... Your email address, nay, nay, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, feel free to do that. Uh, If you would, please sign up with us. We'd love to have you. Speaking of uh, uh, good things, U.S. News has a a 2024 report on the Best Cars for Families Awards. And joining us now is John Vincent. John, it's good to see you again. How are you, my friend? Hello, John. Uh Uh-oh. Got to unmute, John. Sorry. There we go. Nice to see you guys again. Hey, thank you for very much for uh, joining us today. Okay, uh, let's see. U.S. News announces the 2024 Best Cars for Families. Before we get to that, let's go over the criteria for yours, your report and, and what you kind of went by to judge these cars. So for Best Cars for Families, we look at not only a car's overall scores in our rankings and reviews system, but we also look at things like cargo space, uh, technology that's family-friendly, um, teen driver systems uh, that can uh, let you monitor your your teen driver behind the wheel, um, even things like a hands-free lift gate that you know make things easier for families. So we look at that kind of stuff. It's all data-driven. We don't just throw darts at a dartboard and pick out the best cars for families. We actually look at what the data tells us. Now, are all of these 2024 models? These are all 2024 models. Very nice. Okay. How long did it take you guys to compile this? I work with a bunch of uh, really smart researchers. and. So do I. A few months to put all this stuff together. A few months, yeah. So I understand that you evaluated ninety vehicles. Oh my gosh, Uh, that's that's a lot. I I would be like at the end of the day of going, my God, I don't know what to deliver. Turn here. I can only imagine what you went through. They uh, they work very hard at this uh, to get it. Okay, so uh, let's. How do you want to start? Do you want to start with brands or vehicles specifically? How do you want to work this? Let's just work our way down the list. Let's uh, start with the best two row midsize SUVs for families. All right. And that's the Honda Passport. The Honda Passport. Uh, that is that. Is that a minivan? No, the Honda Passport is essentially a two row version of the Honda Pilot. Gotcha. Um, it's slightly lifted. You know, the, the Passport's just a vehicle that you know might not stand out in any one area, but does everything well. Well, Hondas usually do, don't you agree? Exactly. Kind yeah. of bulletproof, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, they're kind of pricey. Well, I say pricey. They're usually priced over and above their competitors by uh, two, $3,000. You agree? A little bit, yeah. They're, yeah. they're a little bit of a premium uh, mark out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see. So let's do the best three-row mid-size SUV for families. And that's the Kia Telluride. Uh, you know, the Kia Telluride wins a lot of awards, and it wins them because it's that good. It does everything well. Um, it's in its uh, kind of 1.5, version 1.5 generation. They just uh, refreshed it, and uh, they made a great SUV even better. Before we move on, I did want to mention that uh, I see here that you also have hybrids, you also have uh, electrics, you've got uh, full-size SUVs, uh, body-on-frame style, and uh, you also got some cars here. Okay, so let's continue on. Best compact SUV for families. And that's a very crowded segment that has a lot of great vehicles in it. And for this award, we pick the uh, 2024 Hyundai Tucson. And, you know, let me just interject this. that To me, a compact is really, 
It's really not a compact the way I think of a compact. I know that I'm old, but back in the day, a compact car was the smallest car the manufacturer made. That's not the case anymore. Um, that That's across the board. I mean, try and put a compact Chevy Colorado pickup truck in your garage. It's not compact anymore. Yeah, exactly. So the Hyundai Tucson. So Hyundai and Kia... They're right up there at the top, number two and number three. That's a, basically the same company, just different um, brands. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like to think of Kia as the Pontiac and Hyundai as the Buick. Interesting. Hmm. That's an interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I get you. All right. Uh, best hybrid car for families. And this is no Very surprise. Camry Hybrid. The Camry Hybrid. And in its I, last year of the current generation, it still was able to win. Well, that doesn't surprise me uh, because, you know, <clears throat> they're a hybrid. They have been working on a hybrid system since the beginning of the Prius. And that dates back to what, uh, 2010? 20, oh, no, 2000. Yeah. Yeah. About 2000, I think, is somewhere in there when they started the Prius. And it's basically the same type of system that they use today at its heart it's the same type of system i mean it's been changed dramatically well of course I mean, the new prius is a an amazing car compared to the original prius uh but the camry you know it uses that drivetrain and gives you 40 plus mpg out of a sedan which you know is fantastic a nice sedan yeah, nice it is. Sedan. Yeah, that that Camry has come a long <laughs> way, like the hybrid system, no doubt about it. Okay, best hybrid SUV for families, and this really draws my attention because this is a recently updated or brand new Highlander. Yep, it's the Highlander Hybrid. Uh, the car behind me on the screen here. Um, it's a, uh, you know, it kind of defines what a three row SUV is, and it gives you fantastic mileage. I mean, you look at the Telluride, Telluride's great, but its one weakness is fuel economy. And Toyota fixes that with the Highlander Hybrid, which, uh, you know, you need to save money for those theme park admissions. And the, the, hybrid, <laughs> the, the Highlander Hybrid will let you do that. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite uh, theme park? <laughs> uh, Disney World. Is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I would I would say I'd agree with you. <clears throat> um, best electric vehicle for families now, does this include both cars and SUVs in the uh, category? This one does. Okay. So this is across the board, best electric vehicle for families, and that is? Yes. That is the Hyundai Ionic 5. Another Hyundai. Hmm. Another Hyundai. So Hyundai and Kia, they do something interesting in the way that they design their electric cars. A lot of electric vehicles like the Ford F-150 Lightning have a huge front trunk. Um, with the Hyundais and Kias, instead of doing that, they put their drive electronics up front where the engine would be and use that extra space for a larger cabin. So the Ionic 5 has a huge cabin. You know, there, it's a, an electric, so there's no drive line hump. So even the middle seat in the, in the second row is usable for you know, normal people, uh, they just, they package it right for families. Is it, is it an SUV or is it a car? It's called an SUV, but <laughs> you know, it's a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, that's why I asked you because I've seen them and I think that I've had one in the press fleet and it's kind of like a tweener. We, it's it not, is. it's not one. It's, it kind of crosses the lines. And I think that there's a value for that. Okay. Let's talk about the best large SUV. Now this is body on frame. I assume this is the big guy. This is a uh, Chevy suburban. Wow. The yeah. Longest running continuous nameplate in the U S I believe at this wow. point. Wow. And it has no resemblance to suburbans of the past no, not because at all. they can, no. every time that they come out with a, a new version of it and you go, really, this is a suburban. I mean, it's almost <laughs> like uh, Cadillacs of old now, especially at the top end of their lineup, by uh, in the high country suburban and it's, uh, it's Lux. Yeah, and it's pushing a hundred thousand dollars or more. That yeah. is true. Yeah. Um, yeah, well. But there, you know, there's a reason why it's nicknamed the Chevy Subdivision. 
<laughs> oh, I never heard you that can put before. The biggest family you have in oh, there. Oh, that, that, wow. that's beautiful. Full three row <laughs> family and, subdivision. And, and I'm so glad that they have finally perfected that third row where you don't have to actually take the third row out of the vehicle to open up the cargo space. And you know exactly what I'm talking and about. One, I know exactly what you're talking And you also don't need to be, be a gymnast to get to that mm, third row. That's why it. don't they turn the seat around? Yeah, that's the only thing we're lacking is an option to turn the seat around turn the so seat you can around face and backwards. You don't have that problem. <laughs> and he's I laughing. I don't think any any parent wants that again. No, I guess not. Come but, on, yeah, be, especially now with the uh, with all the uh, shootings and everything, they can't have the kids in the back seat flipping oh. off the uh, the car that's, <laughs> that's behind true. them. You know. That's all true. right, so let's talk about best midsize car for families. And again, midsize is you know it's kind of confusing because to me a midsize today is a full size car. Right, and that is the 2024 Toyota Camry. Hmm. Again, in its last year of its current uh, product cycle, still it's, a great car. So it's um, won two awards. It's best the best hybrid and the straight, I assume, gasoline engine. Why, why, would, why wouldn't the Lexus ES be ahead of that? Uh, because we don't include luxury cars um, in the in our best cars. Okay. Okay. And the, family. Right. Yeah, this, this is, is a family. I got you, family. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, and... The best minivan for families, and I, you know, is I want to say there aren't as many minivans as there once was, but there is competition still out there. Yeah, there aren't as many minivans, but there are, you know, the competition is still strong. It because, is. You know, it's hard to beat a minivan. Once you've had a minivan, you don't want to go to anything else. You know, uh, if somebody it. somebody asked me, Don, why? What is it about you and the minivan? I like them too. Would I buy one personally? Probably not. Now with the advent and the proliferation of SUVs everywhere, but as far as vehicle dynamics, how it drives, how it rides, mm-hmm. and all of the things that it's capable of doing, it's it's a big box on wheels that has luxury throughout. And I would have to say that it would probably be as far as an actual transportation mode for my family, it would have to be a minivan. I'm I'm thinking the Toyota probably, but I would go with the Toyota over the Pacifica. My my opinion. Yeah, the Pacifica one. Um, the Toyota it gets up there in price, and that's uh, that's one issue with well, it. Um, it does have some great features. I mean, all wheel drive, hybrid powertrain, so great mileage. But uh, when look, looking at the overall numbers, the Pacifica wins. Mm-hmm. And the Pacifica mm-hmm. has some features that nobody else has. You know, it's funny you should say that because the first thing, the first thing that comes to my mind is the the stow-and-go system. Because yep. if, if, if you want to use the seats, great. And then that, that little cubby that's underneath the floor works great for luggage. They flatten them out. Uh, yeah, everything that you could possibly throw underneath there. And still keep it inside the vehicle and go for weeks on a vacation and still have plenty of room for family and all of the luggage and stuff that's in it. Yep. And if you look at a lot of the newer minivans, you can't remove the center row at all. And the Chrysler makes it easy. Yeah. Just flip it into the floor. I think that it's the ultimate. Uh, I don't know about reliability. Um, I would assume that now that it's getting a little bit long in the tooth, Although it's still a very attractive vehicle, I would imagine that uh, now that they've worked out all of the bugs that they had originally, because let's face it, it has a lot of technology in it, and it's got yes. all all of the plugs, you know, the cell phone stuff, uh, the, the the screens for the kids in the back seat to play their video game, whatever, whatever you want that's in that van. Well, the, the, the Chrysler minivan years ago was a leader in that group to begin with. And, it started. and yeah. it's got a vacuum cleaner in it. <laughs> and it's got a vacuum cleaner. you got to have and that. The, uh, the entertainment screens in back are linked to the navigation system so the kids can see how, how long it is to get there. They can it's follow they along. Keep asking. Yeah, yeah. stop it. Are we there yet? Well, Don's a new grandfather. He should get a minivan to take his grandson well, around. Well, he's only one, so I've got a few uh, years uh, okay. on, on the uh, leash. And well, I'll get one at the Meekum auction, I'm sure. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, John, how fun! Uh, this is uh, this is great fun uh, for everybody to uh, look at, see all of the the award winners at U.S. News. And um, hey, John, I have a question. Yep, you said that was a Highlander behind you. 
Yep. Is it a 25? 24. That's a 24. Yep. I like the way that looks. I keep looking at it over your shoulder there, and, and it just doesn't look like any of the Highlanders I've seen. Well, you're before. not getting one, so you just sit still. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> sooner or later, I'm going to have to buy the wife something. There you go. Well, there, there you have it. Well, I'm a minivan owner, and I love my minivan. There you well, go. I'm yep. with you, buddy. When yep. I had one, we, we were doing a lot of freelance work, and it was great to put the photo gear in the back. You lift up the back of it. The girlfriend or wife could sit under there in the shade while I was out there shooting pictures of her husband's, and my wife would keep her entertained. It was perfect. <laughs> her husband's. And his wife. Yeah, and his wife. Or his girlfriend, whoever you happen to have at the show. And his girlfriend. Oh my God. You know, it's turning a little sick here now, John, so we, we <laughs> appreciate it. let you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. U.S. News 2024 Best Cars for Families. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk again soon. Yeah. Thanks, I hope so. John. That's fun. good stuff. Always good stuff. Yeah, I like that stuff. Uh, the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream our three-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com and podcasts at your favorite podcast provider. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Mecham Auctions, the world's largest collector car auction company, returns to Houston, Texas, April 4th through the 6th at NRG Center. Featuring 1,000 muscle cars, Corvettes, trucks, customs, and more. Broadcast on Motor Trend TV and streaming live on Max. From avid collectors to those new to the Meekum experience, we welcome everyone. Register to bid now at Meekum.com. By the way, I wanted to mention that uh, our uh, racing calendar was sponsored by Texas Muscle Car Club Challenge. Thank you for that. I didn't I didn't get that in earlier. It's okay. I, I needed to mention that. It's been a busy day. It's been it busy, is, yeah, busy, it has busy, been. busy. And I, you know me, and I get distracted often. Oh, In fact, right. they uh, they have their season opener race tomorrow. Oh, yeah? Where? Yeah. I'm trying to remember where she said it was. Okay, well, uh -oh. it's somewhere. This is a drag racing league, and uh, it's uh, tons of fun. And uh, it's a fun group. And if you're into uh, drag racing, check them out. Texas Muscle Car Club Challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to do that. Uh, Jeffrey, you want to do wheels on TV? I've got that. And what I've picked out this week uh, are three movies. 
yeah. that you can watch. Now, Richard Tomlin kind of alluded to one earlier that I've got on here. It's called Formula One Drive to Survive. Yes, it is in, I believe, its fifth or sixth season. Uh, it is on Netflix. So you subscribe to Netflix. You can go ahead and get it. Uh, you get a look into the lives of the Formula One competitors and all of their drama. Uh, I threw that in there. And the teams. Now it's in its, uh, again, fifth or sixth season. Viewers can go behind the scenes with anything but normal activity. The second one, and I've actually seen this movie. It's called The Lady and the Dale. It's on HBO. It's about Geraldine Elizabeth Liz Carmichael. She got the world's attention with a 70 mile per hour mile per gallon, I should say, 70 mile per gallon, three-wheeled sedan called the Dale. It couldn't get her company off the ground. It was a big scam. Uh, it is a four-part documentary, so check it out. I liked it. What's it, was it called? Of, it's called The Lady and the Dale. Okay. So check that out. The last one uh, that I think is, is pretty good to watch, and I have seen parts of it, not all of it, is called Framing John DeLorean. It's on a Hulu, Don. It is uh, a look into the life of John DeLorean from the rise of General Motors to his development of the DeLorean sports car. And there's much more behind the scenes of this controversial auto exec than it is also a documentary. So check those things out. Uh, I've seen one and a half of these. They're pretty good. It held my attention. And I have very short attention that, span. That poor guy was set up big time yep. with his yeah. cocaine thing. And well, He was hey. trying to save his company and... Uh, really? Okay. There's. I'm sure there were other ways to do it, but the quick way out isn't always the best way. Yeah, well. So um, He built an iconic car mm -hmm. that is more popular, I think, than it was when it was new. Mm -hmm. um, and in after his death as well. Yeah. So. Yep. So that's what I got. Okay. Check them out. All right. We shall do that. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, I need to do some calculations here. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, I got it. Uh, Tesla's. He <laughs> didn't Tesla, even take his shoes off. No, I, I know. I just had to think about it for a second. I <laughs> used to be able to do three and four things at a time. Now it's just one. And oh, don't do that very well ah, either. Gotcha. Tesla's second generation Roadster will feature quote rocket technology end quote through a collaboration with aerospace company and twin SpaceX that will allow the sports car to accelerate zero to 60 in under one second, according to Elon <laughs> Musk. Musk, in an interview released Monday with former CNN journalist Don Lemon, he's still alive, that idiot, suggested the future sports car maybe can fly. It's not out of the question, Musk said in response to a question. Musk said, Last month that the new roadster, which was first presented in late 2017, will launch next year. First generation roadster was Tesla's first car to go on the market in 2008. Mm -mm -mm. Ford Motor Company delaying planned three-row electric vehicles similar in size to the Explorer and Lincoln Aviator as it focuses on smaller, more affordable EVs, according to people familiar with the company's plans. The three-row EVs to be built in Canada at Ford's planned Oakville Electric Vehicle Complex were expected to go on sale in early 2025. Instead, Ford is shifting to launch an affordable EV on a small vehicle platform as early as late 2026. Uh, the small crossover is expected to be built at the company's Louisville assembly plant. The UAW and Ford agreed as part of the 2023 labor contract to add a new EV product to Louisville before the deal expires in 2028, although the parties did not specify timing. Automakers are losing thousands of dollars on every electric vehicle they sell. Yeah, they are. Still. And for the most part, not meeting consumer expectations for the vehicles, according to Boston Consulting Group. The group estimates that most automakers lose about $6,000 on each EV they sell wow. for $50,000 after accounting for customer tax credits. If original equipment manufacturers can't make money in this next generation of EVs, something's going to have to change, according to Andrew Lowe, a senior partner at Boston Consulting. Whether automakers have the stomach to keep investing until they get to the level of scale and efficiency where they can actually turn a profit, that is the question. Automakers differ in their approaches to EVs, but most have felt the punch of slowing sales growth. Toyota, for example, will buy credits to meet emissions regulations, choosing to base its EV plans on consumer demand. 
Ford, which less than two years ago said it wanted to eventually challenge Tesla in EV sales, has cut production of its electric F-150 Lightning pickup and halted shipments for an undisclosed issue. Nearly 40% of 3,000 U.S. consumers surveyed by Boston Consulting in January said they intend to purchase an EV as their next vehicle, but they expressed strict requirements to make the jump. EV intenders want 20-minute charging times, a 350-mile driving range, and a price of $50,000, according to the group's report in the survey. That's a hefty wish list there. It is. No lie. Good luck. Stellantis said Friday it's cutting about 2% of its U.S. engineering, technology, and software jobs, about 400 people, because of unprecedented uncertainties and heightened competitive pressures around the world. Affected workers were notified Friday morning yesterday. Mm -hmm. Layoffs are effective March 31st. Stellantis says the cuts would better align resources while preserving the critical skills needed to protect our competitive advantage. What a crock of what a lineup. Hooey. Never mind. I- employees who are laid off will receive severance and other job transition assistance. Well, we talked about that last night at dinner. Uh, China is building an EV plant in Poland, and their uh, Stellantis is getting involved in that. Good luck. Um, an American Honda will reduce dealership profit margins on new vehicles and make other changes designed to help support the company's costly transition to electric, according to a corporate memo. The Japanese automaker's 0.5% profit margin reduction affecting the amount between the invoice price that dealerships pay and the manufacturer's suggested retail price comes with additional changes to marketing, advertising, and service payments. Okay. Honda's actions are a response to customers not yet being widely able to afford EVs. All right. Time now for a quick break on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. We will wrap up today's show right after these brief messages. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Lupi Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Lupi's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Lupi Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Lupi Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Lupi Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. Well, that's it for this week's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. This is your invitation to follow us on Facebook. Give us a like, tell your friends about us, and share our stuff if you would. We'll keep you posted on all things automotive all week long, including our famous interviews, new car reviews, upcoming events, cruise-ins, racing, manufacturer, and car, truck, and SUV news. When you're looking for some award-winning car talk, Listen to us during the week. You can find the In Wheel of Time Car Talk Show 24-7 via the iHeartRadio app. Daily 30-minute podcasts are available from your favorite streaming provider. We post a new episode every day. And don't forget, we live stream this show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com every Saturday, 8 to 11 Central. 
The In Will Time Marketing and Video Technical Director is We Need More, Jeff Zekin. For booking agent, video editor, posting personality, and overall do-it-all, Mike Mars, along with Chief Engineer David Ainsley, who's sleeping David. in this morning, I'm Don Armstrong. We hope you join us next week for another live award-winning production of the In Will Time Car Talk Show, Saturday, March 30th, 8 to 11, on all of our In Will Time Car Talk outlets, live from the Sugar Shack Studios. Have a great weekend. Be safe out there. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.